Yeah, it's been Facebook's can get been getting grumpy about uh doing the live stream the last couple of months, but I got it. All right. Good evening, everyone here in person and online uh, on Zoom. Uh, to get started, welcome to our February Fairhaven Community Management Team meeting. Uh, just to go over a few house rules very quickly. Uh, we want to have a focused, no fault problem solving meeting. Step forward, step back, open, honest, safe space. Listen with open minds, believe in everyone's best intentions, action oriented, decide what we want, when we want it, and plan for its happening. And have it the Fair Haven Center collaborating together. We're going to start, proceed, and end on time to and honor the agenda. And I just wanted to welcome anyone here in the room or online if this is your first meeting. Uh, you can raise your hand here on, uh, in the room or online. I don't see any new member, new visitors here in the room. Is there anyone online? I don't know, see that. Uh, no one's raising their hand, but I, I see a few names that look like they might be new, but welcome. If you're shy, oh, we got at least one. Welcome, welcome. All right, so um, for those watching via Zoom, just be mindful to your microphones, use the chat box, and we have started the recording. If you do not wish to be recorded, you can simply just turn the camera off. That's not a problem. Uh, I'll officially call the meeting to order uh, and we'll do the roll call of the board. That's me, right? Is that true? Either one of us. Go ahead. Okay, Liz. Present. Ms. Gina. Abby. Present. Adam. I'm here. Um, Lee is not here. And Christina, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And Adam, um, do we have quorum for voting members? We do. Okay, Fabulous. perfect. Yeah. All right. So to get it started, may I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes for January. Uh yeah, January. Oh, uh, so uh, fun fact, I was reading the uh, Robert's rules and we don't have to do a vote. We just have to ask if anyone has any corrections or amendments to make to it. And if they don't, then they just kind of auto pass. Oh, awesome, okay. Anyone have any corrections? Yeah. Okay, so we have the minutes for January. Anyone online? I see no, no hands raised for corrections amendments, all right. All right, perfect. Um, so, Liz, I'm sorry. Can you just keep the chat open for me? Because sometimes people give me information that I like to include into the minutes. You see that little button that says chat? Oh, yeah, um, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Just pop it open for me. Oh. Can you see it? All right, thank okay. you. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, so next we'll have uh, our treasurer, Ms. Gina Coppins, give our financial report. Wait, one, one minute. Okay. Do we need to approve November and December? <laughs> We did the last one. Oh, okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> In January, there were no expenditures. So the balance continues to be $4,138.95. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to our spot from the New Haven Police Department. Uh, I'm sure we have Lieutenant Michael Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I saw him logging earlier. Yeah, he's in this patrol car. He's logging, talking right now. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Adam. That is, you're right. I'm not in a submarine. It's just easier than having the white light in my face. So I am in my patrol car. Um, so I just wanted to uh, talk to everybody real quick this month. Uh, a couple of things that, um, so last month, uh, uh, it was great to have the chiefs at, at the meeting. Uh, we got a lot of support uh, from the chiefs and from the department. Um, so just to put that a little bit into perspective, um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the homicide that happened after we spoke. Uh, there was one at the intersection of Chapel and James. I'll get into detail on that in a minute. But what I wanted to talk about is over the last month, um, if you look at the statistics from January 2022, uh, the New Haven Police Department, our officers did 50 motor vehicle stops in January of 2022. Uh, in January of 2023, there were over 400 motor vehicle stops conducted in uh, Fairhaven specifically. 
Um, that's a 700% increase for anybody who's a mathematician in the room. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was um, shocked by those numbers, but it was great to see the, the presence from uh, the motorcycle officers. We have a bunch of new, newer motorcycle officers. They're new to the unit, not new to the department. And so um, you probably saw them on Clinton Avenue at Lombard and Ferry, um, down on Chapel Street, along Grand Avenue. And so um, I appreciate that support from the department. In addition, we've had additional, uh, we've had other walking beats that have been um, on Grand Avenue um, and then out uh, trying to branch off when our resources allow us to. So a couple major incidents that I wanted to talk about, um, obviously one of which is the homicide that occurred on January 18th. Uh, officers were dispatched to the intersection of Chapel and James uh, just about 8.30 in the evening um, for a person down. When officers were arrived in the area, they located a 40-year-old male uh, who we now know is Alexander Pedraza of Fairhaven. Uh, he was suffering from uh, a gunshot wound. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Pedraza succumbed to his injuries uh, while he was being transported to the hospital, um, and he resulted in our uh, second homicide in Fairhaven uh, in the month of January. And so as a result of that, um, the next day we had officers out in the area um, at the school specifically over at Cold Spring School because there's a school right there um, just kind of making sure that everybody um, was trying to instill a sense of uh, safety in the area um, this incident um, as the other incidents that we've had in Fairhaven uh, were very targeted incidents uh, where the offenders um, who perpetrated these acts we have a lot of really good information that we've got gotten from the community that being said um, i know uh, it's always on my information is always on the email that goes out to everyone uh, but if you hear rumors if you hear little pieces of details if you hear anything around any crime in fairhaven uh, but specifically homicides um, if you want to reach out to me um, i've had that happen quite a bit um, basically what happens is people talk on the street and then detectives and uh, different people around hear information. And so it's always great. Uh, people think that like, you know, I don't want to bother, bother, or if you think you don't want to bother me, um, it's no bother at all. Shoot me a text message. If you don't want to send it by text, um, you can certainly give me a phone call. I'll return your call. And then we can, uh, whatever information you think you might have regarding one of these incidents, um, no bit of information is too small, especially when it comes to some of our homicides. And so we have very good leads on all of the homicides that have occurred in the last, uh, all three that have occurred since um, December 30th in Fairhaven. Um, and so uh, I'm very confident that our detectives will have arrest warrants um, in a couple of those. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was because of um, the increase in violence, we've also, not only did we get support from the, from, mm -hmm. uh, the chief's office with the motorcycles, uh, additional walking beats and resources on Grand Avenue and in the areas impacted by violence, uh, but also, um, I talk about it quite frequently, but our plainclothes officers, um, that's officers who are assigned to task forces, the shooting task force, um, they're attached to federal agencies where we are then, uh, the city gains the resources of the, the federal government in uh, deploying those assets out into the district. And so uh, on January 13th, that's uh, on uh, Friday, the, the 13th, uh, plainclothes officers are in Fairhaven. They're looking for one of the homicide suspects that were uh, one of the individuals that was involved in one of the homicides. And while they're looking, they uh, notice they had gotten some information that there was a vehicle with a firearm in it. Um, officers attempted to, to conduct a Apologies, Lieutenant. I accidentally muted you. I'm sorry. I was, I was <laughs> muting other people coming into it so it wouldn't disturb and I accidentally hit you. Sorry. That's okay. Are you trying to tell me to stop talking, Adam? No, no, no. Continue. <laughs> right. I'll take that as my cue. Um, so uh, officers are um, attempting to stop this vehicle. The vehicle takes off driving away. Um, we have uh, cars that are not marked police cars, then safely follow this vehicle. Um, the vehicle, while it's driving away, uh, ends up losing control uh, and going through a, a fence. It runs over a Power Wheels toy and then becomes disabled on a stump. Uh, there's a point for this detail in this. Um, the offender fled the scene. Uh, a firearm and a significant amount of narcotics were located. The offender was also apprehended. Uh, our plainclothes officers were on the way to Walmart to buy a new Power Wheels toy for the kids who lived at that house uh, when they happened to stumble upon an active fire on Quinnipiac Avenue. Uh, 
uh, our plainclothes detectives ran up to the building. Um, we're not firefighters, but they were able to make sure that nobody was inside, set up some um, roadblocks to be able to allow for the fire department to come in safely. At that exact same moment, uh, those two things are going on. At that exact same moment, we got a call that a person was uh, suffering from suicidal ideations and preparing to jump off of the Ferry Street Bridge. Uh, oh other God. officers other officers were sent to that. Um, I responded to that as well. And uh, I don't know if anyone's <laughs> seen it, but if you haven't, um, check out uh, our social media page. Um, the officer, uh, Officer Widiak from uh, the East Shore District had recently uh, attended CIT, Crisis Intervention Team Training. And uh, he used his skills to be able to empathetically connect with an individual who was in crisis. Um, they shared a very authentic moment in engaging in a hug um, after the individual um, you know, was able to decide not to jump off the bridge. And so officers were able to, um, that incident was captured on body camera footage, um, but there's a still photograph going around of just, just showing the great work that Officer Wittiak did um, in, in uh, communicating with somebody who was in uh, one of the worst moments of their life. And so um, I thought Officer Wittiak did a great job uh, with that. And we obviously encourage officers to do that kind of stuff all the time. Um, it happens quite a bit. We just don't necessarily see it out in the public all that much. And so uh, in, in the matter of a couple of minutes, uh, a firearm was taken off the street, a significant amount of narcotics, a uh, power wheels was purchased, and uh, a person who was um, suffering from suicidal ideation, their life was also saved. And so I just thought that was a, a very interesting 15 minutes in East Shore and, and Fairhaven on Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> more recently, on um, just last week, um, officers were in the area of uh, plainclothes officers again. There was a call on Middletown Avenue. Um, and so this is one where um, if you see something, it's very helpful for us if you say something. Uh, so a person calls in and says, hey, I'm driving. And I happen to see two individuals in the car that just drove by me and they're waving guns around. They're not waving at anybody, but it's just kind of weird to see two people waving guns as they're driving. Um, that information, uh, an hour or so later, our plainclothes officers who were out in the district looking for uh, different types of uh, crime going on happen to see that exact vehicle that was described. They wait for it to park. They safely uh, pull up to the vehicle. Uh, the two people inside the car end up taking off, taking off running. Uh, this is on Poplar Street, just by Chatham Street. When um, they leave a, uh, a stolen handgun inside the car, one offender is uh, arrested on scene right there. Um, this gets a little scary because as one of the offenders is running away from the scene, uh, he is carrying with him a uh, nine millimeter ghost gun with an extended magazine. He is running with it in hand as officers confront him. Um, he jumps back over a fence, ends up throwing the handgun and uh, officers uh, take him into custody without further incident. And so um, great, absolutely phenomenal job by um, the plainclothes officers, um, just getting people with guns that are out there on the street looking to do uh, harm to other people. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have for uh, the month of January. Our other crime stats look um, really good. I know it's, it's tough. To, I, I don't want to lead by saying this is a good month because there were still two homicides. And obviously any month that we have homicides is not a good month. Um, but otherwise, our, our crime in Fairhaven um, is, is down. Some of the issues that we're looking to deal with are... Um, 480 Ferry Street has seen an increase in uh, people who are um, suffering from homelessness or suffering from addiction that are kind of setting up shop in their stairwells. So we're working with uh, the property manager there to one, get people services, but to address some of the criminal activity that's been going on inside there. Um, and then also uh, with the help of some people in the room there, we have been trying to tow some of the vehicles that have been long standing in areas um, that are just an eyesore, that are just being dumped in places. And so if you happen to see those, again, it's not a bother to us. Um, make sure that if you see vehicles that are just seem like they've been dumped places or left places, uh, we're looking for those, um, those vehicles. They might be stolen. Most of the time they're not, they're just abandoned. And so we want to just clean up the area, get those vehicles off the street, um, especially when they're disabled or not working. Um, one last thing, there was a, uh, an increase in the last two weeks of, uh, there were a couple of juveniles who rotated their way through Fairhaven. Um, they stole a car from a person who left their car running midday at Seatown. And another one um, occurred at Ferry and Peck. They left their, a person left their car running there. Both were the same juveniles 
Uh, one vehicle was recovered in New York. Uh, another was re recovered in another jurisdiction. Um, those juveniles have been ar arrested, um, mm -hmm. but that is uh, just something to be wary of. Um, we saw a lull in it a little bit, uh, but just even if you're jumping out of the car for two seconds, um, anywhere where there's uh, other people around, uh, just make sure you, you take your key fob with you. If you want to leave the car running, I understand it's cold. Uh, make sure you lock the car and also test out. Can you drive your car if the key fob's not in it? Um, some of these cars are, I, I don't understand the technology myself, but um, even if your car is started, you still, even if you don't have the key fob. So say, for example, I start my car, I step out of the car with my key fob. Um, some vehicles do move even if you don't have the key fob in the car. So just be cognizant of that. Lock your doors. Um, don't leave key fobs in the cars. We probably, uh, I'd say 50% of our stolen cars, maybe even more than that, are uh, people who leave the keys in the ignition or keys in the car uh, mm -hmm. and the car running. And so just something to be aware of. Um, I think that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any questions. I just want to say thank you very much, Lieutenant. Um, I did, I text you and um, and I thank you myself, but I talked to some of the residents and I passed the word along and they're very happy with the improvement and, and uh, the motor vehicle stops and, and all the uh, stuff that you've been doing in the area. Much appreciated. No problem, Robbie, thank you. Any other questions here in the room? I don't see anything or comments. Anything online, Adam? Uh, uh, I see no hands. If you've got the question for the lieutenant, anyone? No, it does not appear so. All right, great. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Fumiati. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great night, Richard. All right, so moving on, we'll move uh, on to Ms. Carmen Mendez with the Livable City Initiative. She is with us via Zoom. Oh, you're muted, Carmen. Can you hear me now? All good. Okay, awesome. Good <clears throat> evening, everyone. Um, and Happy New Year. I wasn't able to come in the January meeting. <clears throat> Uh, as many of you know, I was out for about six weeks due to surgery. But um, anyway, I have my report for January and I will share it with you. In the month of January, I have attended maybe 15 or 20 meetings regarding Fairhaven and the condition of some of the blocks in Fairhaven. Um, I have 20 open cases, 20 open notices of violation, cases that are an active notice of violation, which means that in my driving around in the neighborhood, there were houses that were, some people, you know, it may have been due to the holidays, they got <coughs> furniture and they dumped their living room furniture, you know, on the side of their house or the, the back of their house. Um, Sometimes you just need to remind people that you can't do that. Um, but anyway, I have 20 open cases of notices of violation. Plus I have nine new ones that just uh, took place this past week as I was going around. Um, I have a total of 57 cases in notices of violation. Three people have complied already. And one is in the act, an act of, of complying. Uh, this particular resident uh, is um, is a very good person, is a very nice person, is trying to comply, has had some difficulty. I will work and I continue to work with her. Um, I will work with anyone who needs me to work with them. All you have to do is call me and I will work with you. If I forget something, if you call me and I forget, please call me again. Sometimes this job can be very overwhelming and it's easy to forget stuff. So if you've talked to me about something and you haven't heard back from me, please call me again. I don't mind, it's not a bother. Um, and all I wanna do is be helpful anyway. Um, <clears throat> notice is a violation, just so you know, you get a, a flavor of where I've been. There were several on Poplar Street, several on Dover Street, several on Lombard. Lloyd, James, Atwater, Castle Street, Chapel, Clinton Avenue, again Dover, Exchange, Fillmore, 
Grand Avenue, several cases, uh, James Street, several cases, several cases, Lewis Street, uh, Lloyd Street, Lombard again, Monroe, Monroe and Castle, Poplar, more Poplar, a lot of Poplar, and one on Wilcox Place. So, you know, if you want me to take a look at something specific, please call me. I'm at 203-410-6527. Again, I will work with you. If I've forgotten something, please call me and remind me. Um, the winter is a little bit tougher, um, but we need to get it under control now because the spring comes and then there's spring cleaning and everyone's dumping their stuff out again. So we want to control that and we want to have a good educational um, uh, promotion or educational program out there so that people know what to do with their uh, bulk trash. Does anyone have any questions for me? I do. Uh, I Hi. Um, Hi. We have two houses being built down on Lower Downing Street on property that's across from the Clinton Avenue School that I think used to belong to Reyes. Uh, and I'm just wondering, does the city own that property or is that privately owned? The city does own a piece of property there. Um, the, you're talking right next to the uh, the market, right? At the corner, there's a corner market there. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Up further, I'm talking up further by where the where the school the schoolyard is. There's a, oh, there was a, the big the big plot of land you're talking about, right? Yeah, that's the two big owned. That's, that's privately owned. owned. Okay, I didn't know. I wasn't sure what the story was. Do you know what's happening with the property that had was where the laundromat was that's been sitting there for years and nothing's being done? No, but there's been a lot of talk. I can get back to you on that. There has been talk lately about what's going on with that piece of property. Because um, it's a real eyesore. And, you know, with these two new houses being built there and the other work that's been done in that area, it's really awful not to have that cleaned up. Would you please, I won't be in tomorrow, but would you please call me on Monday? I wrote it down. Call me on Monday. And okay. I will give you a response to that. Okay. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. And we do have a question here in the room. Go ahead. About the laundromat property. Up until a couple of days ago, there was a yellow for sale sign on that fence mm -hmm. saying that the property was for sale by the city of New Haven <clears throat> and listing a, a telephone number. And now the sign is down. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's sold. Interesting. I don't know about that, but I can ask our um acquisition oh, property acquisition a uh, person about that i will find out and please um don't hesitate to call me either and i will give you a response on your tuesday any other questions in the no oh, no i'm sorry okay. over here. <laughs> all right any other questions on the line I don't see any, anyone, and last chance? No? All right, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mendez. I really do appreciate all the work that work you do in the Fairhaven. Thank you, thank you, it's a pleasure, it's my pleasure. You're welcome, have a great night. You too. All right, thank you. Uh, next we'll have via Zoom, uh, Jay Mont Carter with the Civilian Review Board uh, giving his quarterly presentation. Yeah, Jay Wan's here in the Zoom, so I think he just needs to unmute and. There we go. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Sorry about that. I'm in the middle of family time at the same time. Okay. Got a seven-year-old. Okay, so my quarterly review consists of um, two, three months. I've been on a political uh, contract requiring me some time to work out of out of state. Um, so I was not able to attend any of the um, subcommittees. Um, however, starting in January, I did pick up my work um, in regards to um, going to my file cases. 
Um, I know that in our meeting of January, we're going to be having an administrative assistant um, who's going to be helping out with some of the caseloads, um, structuring and organizing um, a lot of the work that's happening within um, our areas. Um, and um, for our next meeting would be um, the third Monday of this month. And I should be caught up with the work that I've, I wasn't able to do by I mean, not being um but I mean, not having a time to be here to handle things. So um, as of right now, that's all the information I have to give to you guys. Thank you so much, Jaywan. Are there any questions? Oh, Abby, you have a question? Yeah. Um, have there been any cases you guys have been reviewing that um, have involved anybody from Fairhaven in the past few months? Um, yes. So with our cases, it doesn't have to be something that may have happened three months from now, it, it, like with that question. I'm actually re reviewing a case that took place about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we have cases that could span from from the uh, start of our inception CRB to cases that are fairly recent. It depends on um, the progress of how things is passed along. Are you allowed to share anything about um, any of the cases involving Fairhaven residents? Um, from the information I was received from uh, court counsel, we can't. We are limited on what we can share regarding certain information. Um, Fumiati has had the ability to talk about certain things, but our our uh, position, we're not able to discuss those things. There's actually a case going on right now with some information that was given out, and um, we're we're dealing with how to handle. The flow of information. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. All right. Any other questions either on, on Zoom or here in the room? I don't see anything here in the room. And it doesn't look like there's anything on Zoom either. Yeah, I don't see anyone raising their hand or anything. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Jay Wan. I really do appreciate your work. Thank you. Have a blessed night, y'all. Yes, you too. Thank you. Uh, moving uh, forward, we have uh, our economic development update with Ms. Kathleen Prolak. I believe she may be on the line. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I hope it doesn't come in too choppy. Um, I'm sort of remote. Uh, so I don't have a, an update in particular from last month. Um, nothing has uh, gone away. We have those grant applications in uh, very, very local for Grand Avenue merchants and then some citywide uh, improvements as well planned. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions for me, happy to answer, but I'm sorry I don't have, but no news is good news sometimes. Everything is just status quo at the moment. All right, thank you so much. Any questions for Ms. Krolak in the room on Zoom? Uh, I just wanted to say, I think you were the one that mentioned that Valentino Taylor had gotten the, the grants or whatever, and that, that looks super nice. It's not in Fairhaven, but it's just outside, and it looks super nice as you're driving down. Uh, right, it's Grand uh, Avenue, yeah. yeah. It, it does, it does. And so that was a, a commercial condo, so they own that unit and have invested significantly in it. All right, thank you. Any, uh, anything else, comments, questions? Seeing none here in the room, I think we can move forward. If there's nothing there on uh, via Zoom on your end, right, Adam? Uh, no, I see, see no questions, so. Okay, great. So um, let's move forward to the vision in action uh, in the category of responsive, transparent government, economic community development. We'll be hearing from a few groups. Uh, first up, we have the Connecticut Violence Intervention Professional, Mr. Frank Redenberg. Hello, I'm Lydia. Um, I don't know where you want to stand. Oh, you're you're just just I say, as long as the mic picks you up, so the big circle thing on the table in front of you. So yeah. Okay, I'll just stand right next to it. Can you guys hear me? All right. So um, we are from Connecticut Violence Intervention Program, also known as CTVIP. Um, we work with at-risk youth in New Haven and Hampton. So when we speak of at-risk youth, um, we speak of the highest at-risk youth. So we often get referrals for kids who are not taking out the trash, um, 
who need a mentor, a role model. We don't work with those kind of kids. We refer those out. We work with kids who are carrying guns, stealing cars that we spoke about earlier. Um, you know, the other people spoke about and also in gangs, things like that. So those are the populations that we work with. And um, the work that we do, we have all of our staff are experienced experts in the field. So um, they have a caseload of 15, 10 to 15 youth. Um, we also work with the reentry population. So um, a lot of the work that we do is mediations, um, try to avoid retaliations. We also respond to scenes. So Frank is gonna talk a little bit more about that a little later on. Um, but our main goal is to decrease crime, not only in Fairhaven, but New Haven in itself and Hamden. Um, so that's the work that we do. I won't keep you guys too long. Frank is going to talk about the work that he's doing in Fairhaven. Um, so I'll have him take over the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Frank Redenti Jr. Some of you know me as Little Frank. <laughs> Some of you remember my dad. Uh, he's a lot shorter than I am. Uh, <laughs> I am a lifelong Fairhavener. Uh, 28 years today is my today is my anniversary with the Board of Ed. Uh, I started as a part-time security guard in 95, worked my way up to truancy, and I'm now the youth development coordinator. Um, as of August 1st, I was hired by CCVIP to work Fairhaven as the street outreach worker. Um, my talents are unique because I'm a Fairhavener. I grew up uh, around a lot of the families here. Um, I ran the basketball program out of Farnham for 25 plus years. I coached a lot of the kids. And I maintain relationships with a lot of my students. Um, so I'm able to walk into a lot of these troubled areas with a sense of rapport with the people that I'm working with. Um, I have a stack of my cards I'm going to leave on the table. If anybody would like to reach out with any questions or concerns, I'm free to you anytime. My email is on there as well. You guys have any questions? I know we are very short and brief. Any There'll questions? be more to come in the next few meetings. I... Yeah. This is my first in-person. I've been doing them via Zoom, but I'll be here in person for the next meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on lunch? Uh, I was just going to, Frank, do you mind if we, uh, you said you're going to leave your business card. Can you give one yeah. to Abby so we can, or, or Christina, so we can feel free to share put it, put it all on the agenda and everything. So everyone, yeah. can, oh, and then Maureen had a question. question. Yeah. Um, there's been coverage in the last couple of weeks about the, um, actually um, distressing poor attendance rate uh, in schools in uh, New Haven or across Connecticut. And I'm wondering, do you, is some of those cases interlinking with yours that kids aren't attending school because they're getting involved in other situations? Yeah, so there's a lot of risk factors with a lot of the youth, um, not just in Fairhaven, but in New Haven in itself, we actually are working with the Board of Ed to um, come up with ways that we can help them. And what we're seeing in the work that we do is a lot of our staff already have those relationships in a lot of the areas in New Haven that you know we're in, we're in every, um, every town. So we're able to build those relationships. A lot of the kids that aren't going to school, nine times out of 10, they're not going to school because they committed a crime the night before, or they have some sort of conflict and they know it's gonna follow them into the school systems. Um, a lot of the times our outreach workers respond to the scenes, sometimes the same time that the police show up or sometimes even before the police show up, just because we have those relationships in all the different neighborhoods of um, New Haven. And we're able to communicate and work with the school systems and each high school and middle school to say, hey, this kid just robbed someone that is also a student at your school two days or three days before, and that's why he's not returning to school. Or we need to do a mediation. As soon as that kid walks through the door, we have to pull them both in and you know resolve this conflict so that there's a safe environment in the school and in the community. So we're bridging that gap between the community and the school systems. Thank you, very helpful. Thank you, any uh, questions? What ages do you work with? So we work with um, 13 to 24, okay. but we also do mediations within the reentry population. So we have a lot of adults who um, have served time with our staff. So all of our staff have experience either in the streets or they've served time. So a lot of the times, if people are coming out in the reentry population, they're reaching out to our staff saying, hey, I see the work that you're doing. I read your book. Um, how can we work together because I have this conflict with someone in the community and I just want to resolve it before I come home. So you're working with three adults. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And even if there is um, youth, sometimes we see crime, 11, 12 years old kids are stealing cars, hanging out with their older cousins. Mm -hmm. um, we also begin that those services at that age as well. Thank you. <laughs> and apart from like folks re reaching out to you directly, how are you getting referred to? Like, how do you make the initial connection with the youth that you work with? That's a great question. So we work with um, New Haven Police Department. Um, they make a lot of referrals. The city, um, pretty much any organization, we work very closely with probation. So we're seeing too that a lot of our staff, especially the long weekends, um, Monday mornings at court is very busy. So we have, you know, one staff going to court for one kid who got caught in a stolen car with five other kids or four other kids. We also get our referrals through there. So we're making those connections in court. Other parents are like, well, I want my kid to have a mentor because they're seeing the support that they're getting. How many people on your staff? We have eight in New Haven and three in um, Hampton. And then we have three also in the position that um, Frank is in. Are those the areas you serve, New Haven and Hampton? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just wanted to add, um, so his current has been in New Haven a long time. We didn't have anybody in Fair Haven who mm -hmm. knows Frank in August. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate you guys that can come into our neighborhood mm -hmm. and really hope that that's going to help move. Yes, Absolutely. And we definitely want to hear from, you know, all the communities in New Haven, but especially Fairhaven. Um, if there's anything that we can do for you guys or there's a higher crime rate, we see that we have a lot of youth who don't live in Fairhaven, but they're committing crimes in Fairhaven. So we want to make sure that if you guys see something, obviously we work with the police, but sometimes we're able to make those connections um, and provide those supports to our youth and kind of bridge that gap. I know a lot with me, a lot of the kids that won't talk to PD will talk to me. Mm, they right. communicate with me directly. Mm, right. And I can communicate those messages that I get through these kids to the, to the PD or other agencies that I'm working with. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you for having us. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they just put uh this uh, the uh, contact info, phone number, email address, cell phone, office phone in the chat as well. So everyone on Zoom can uh, you know they take that down if they if they wish to contact them. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have uh, Representative Ms. Bianca Bowles on behalf of Community Action Agency of New Haven Smart uh, to request a CDBG. Request letter. Um, she, she might not be here. I didn't see her on Zoom. I just say I don't. I don't see in the attendance. I haven't seen her on online all night. So you can okay. move back to her if she's okay. online. Right, so we don't have anything under environment and immigration on our agenda. So we'll move on to health, housing, and public safety. Uh, we have Ms. Becky Mayberry with lead. Oh, sorry, you missed Catholic Charities. Top oh. of the next page. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Catholic Charities. They saw them on here. I just don't see their name. Yeah, Khalil to there. Yeah, I, I, I saw it up there. Sorry, I apologize. Yes. Khalil is on, or was online. I think he's, is he still here? Yes. So page. feel free to unmute yourself, Cleo. The very top of the second page. You see it? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, we can hear you. Hey, how are you guys? Hey. How are you? Good. So um, let me just uh, give you guys a brief introduction about who I am. So my name is Khalil Duquet. Um, I work for Catholic Charities um, Central San Jose. Um, we are located in 290 Grand Avenue, um, right across from the main yeah. school. Can you guys hear me? No. That's better. I apologize. That's better. So, That's better. All, right, yeah. all right. So let me just give you again a quick introduction. So my name is Khalid. I work for Catholic Charities uh, Center San Jose in New Haven. Uh, we're located in 290 Grand Avenue, right across from the Fame uh, Middle School. Um, let me just tell you a little bit of our mission and vision for uh, Catholic Charities. So our mission and vision is uh, to reflect God's love um, by partnering with all to strengthen families and inspire people to um, achieve their fullest potential 
Um, we envision a future where all individuals and families achieve greater safety, um, stability and independence in a compassionate community where people are valued, um, connected and take care of one another. Um, just a quick overview of specifically what we do at Central San Jose. So we have a um, early childhood education program that starts with um, ages, um, I believe, three to then five years old. Um, we also have a food pantry that we facilitate every last Friday of the month, and we work with close collaboration with Connecticut Food Bank in Wallingford to provide more than 150 families per month um, with um, necessary foods to sustain themselves. themselves. Um, we also facilitate a diaper program that runs every last Thursday of every month and that we work with um, um, the Diaper Bank of North Haven. That's just a quick overview of what specifically we do as, um, as far as those programs. Um, I also run the basic human needs department where we um, assist families that are in hardships. Um, that could be anything under um, back rent, security deposits, uh, stuff of that nature. Um, even to, um, you know, if they have to purchase some type of, like, for example, I had a client that had came, they had trouble buying coats for the winter. So we um, help with those kind of things um, in regards to basic human needs. Um, so the CDBG that we're applying for specifically for the um, for the youth program. Um, so then a quick overview of the program. So um, we, um, Central San Jose um, Youth Services, we provide services to underserved youth and families living below the poverty level located in the heart of the Fairhaven community. Um, grounded in the most recent literature on youth development, we continue to offer after school and um, mentoring program. Um, some of our programs um, include, but not limited to career development, um, basketball, mentoring, academic support, and health and wellness curriculums. So um, our programs effectively balance academic support with, the, with a variety of um, structured, engaging, and enjoyable um, extracurricular activities. And um, due to our dynamic program structure, some um, results measure measures youth improvement in academic performance, such as uh, social and cultural competency and um, character development. Um, in like matter, we incorporate hidden curriculum that teaches um, values slash habits, um, aside from the formal curriculum content. Um, then Central San Jose, um, we train um, our staff on providing best practices when servicing youth. Um, employees meet once a month for a four hour training on the 40 developmental assets Mm -hmm. um, profile through our thorough training, staff obtained the knowledge of external and internal assets in which lightens the communication filter in order to provide assistance and healthy development um, upon New Haven adolescents. Mm-hmm. Um, not only do we provide enrichment programs to our youth, but through partnerships, the agency oh. provides services to disenfranchise youth uh-huh. um, and families. As a supplement resource, youth and families mm-hmm. are provided with food and diapers as well as um, basic human needs. Um, assistance okay. that's pretty much okay. a summary of everything that we do as far as the youth program any questions i actually have a question you mentioned assistance with back rent mm-hmm. um how what's the contact information for that um i'm actually the person that um that facilitates that program um i believe i can put my number i don't have any well obviously I don't, i'm not in, i'm not in there in- yeah absolutely yeah Thank you. No problem. There's a lot of um, tenants who um, would would love that information and yeah. want to make sure they get it. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, just to uh, you know, for your information, um, we are limited with our um, resources and also funding, but we I have been getting a lot of phone calls and they have to meet a certain um um they have to um qualify with certain per, uh, parameters. But you know, I'll put in my uh, my contact information and they can give me a call whenever they they can. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any questions uh, here in the room? I don't see anything here. Anything else on, on Zoom, Adam? Uh, anybody? Oh, I, I oh, oh, we do. Yeah, Maureen's got one. And then Darlene will go. Go ahead, Maureen. Um, what's the grant request? You're, are you How asking much? me the, the amount? The yeah. amount. I believe it's um 16000 and have you received this in previous years? Yes, we have. Okay, thank you. No problem. That was my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make sure you drop some number in the chat. How oh, can you drop his number into the chat? Oh, yeah. Can you just um, 
Put your number in the chat, please, Khalil. We'll we'll do the la. Okay, I see the meeting check, correct? Uh -huh. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I will. I'll do it right now. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So if there's uh, no further questions for Khalil, we'll move on now. I, I apologize for almost skipping over you. Yeah, there will be a vote, and we'll let you know the outcome. Um, so. Adam, did you want to put the vote in the chat or at the end of the night, you will? Uh, I usually do it after all the presentations for which we have a vote. Okay. Uh, so we still have Mary Wade, uh, who's asking for a CDG, CD, B, B, that thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we should uh, decide if we want to vote on uh, a community action agency if they don't present. Okay, right. so Khalil, we'll we'll get back to you with the outcome of the vote next week. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. No All right, so uh, moving on, nothing under environment and immigration. So we'll move on to health, housing, and public safety. Uh, we have Ms. Becky Mayberry uh, on behalf of Lead and Healthy Homes Program. And I don't see her here. I don't think she's here in the room. So uh, I I don't know uh, if. I have I don't see a Becky in the in the chat here either. So okay. All right, thank you. Um, next up we have Ms. Patricia Scussel with Mary Wade Home Community Transportation Services with the CBBG grant request. Hi. Hi, how are thank you? Thank you so much for having me this evening. And uh David Hunter um usually is attending, but he sends us look at the air first. Um, so we actually, uh, as many of you know, uh, Mary Wade's been a mainstay in this community since for over 150 years, not just um, being, a, you know, a home for people who are in need of, of care in either temporary or, or permanently, but they've become a, a great supporter of the community. One of the reasons why I came to work there is because I've always admired David Hunter and all he's done for the community. Um, so there are, in essence of time, there are two uh, different CDBG grants that we've written and that we're asking for letters of support for. The first is um, for Kimberly carpet replacement. So Kimberly, the Kimberly building is our main building, which is our long-term and short-term care units. And the carpet right now is about 15 years old. Um, so if you've been through COVID, as you can imagine, it needs repair. The uh, total project cost is $70,000 approximately, and we're seeking about $56,000 for the CDDG grant, so about 80% of the funding. Um, it is a very expensive um, job that we have to do, uh, but it's something that's much needed. After the carpet is repaired, obviously, it's going to make it much easier to clean. It's going to be more environmentally safe. Um, also, it'll help with reducing trips and falls for all of our residents um, and, and our visitors. So that is the first one. So um, does anybody have any questions about the carpet project? Yeah. Yes. Repairing or replacing the carpet? Replacing. Okay. Yeah, completely replacing. It's been there 15 years. And that's 80000 and you're asking for 15000 the, the total project cost for repairing it is 70000 Great shit to plus. I don't have the square footage, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty big uh, space that's covering. Um, over the course, we, we anticipate it's going to impact about 300 people you know, at, at the minimum. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, 70,361 uh, 70, is the exact amount that they've gotten from the bid, and 56,289 is our request for a CDB. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any um, questions on uh, Zoom regarding the carpet replacement? So that's just the first one, is just the carpet right. replacement. Yeah, the carpet replacement. The second um, is the program that I actually run, um, and we're seeking funding for about 40% of that project, um, our public service transportation. And the total project cost for that is $101,000, $101,000, $101,700. And the request we're making is $42,035. So um, the essence of this request is twofold. The first is we, we um, is everybody familiar with our transportation services? No. 
<laughs> so um, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with our transportation services, we um, receive a grant from the agency on aging to provide transportation to the community. Um, during the week, it is from nine to two, we provide uh, transportation to folks for medical appointments. Um, we can't service people who are on Medicaid because they have to use the state by provider. So right now we service about 1300 units and a unit is one way trip. So um, we, that's an addition that doesn't include all the residents that we transport and all the um, folks who live at um, Shine Place. And it doesn't include other, um, you know, our adult day centers. This is just people in the community that we transport. We're transporting about 1,300 people, I mean, 1,300 rides, so one week trips. Mm -hmm. um, and on weekends between nine and two, we do community trips. Um, we take anybody, it doesn't matter if they're on Medicaid or on any other type of insurance. If anybody wants to go shopping, grocery shopping, we take a lot of people to Walmart, um, Target. Um, we've taken people to restaurants if they want to go to lunch. We've taken people to the library, hair salon. So between nine and two on, on weekends, uh, church, synagogue, we're taking people. To, um, so we have a grant to cover that. The grant from the Agent Sign on Aging, while it's incredibly generous, doesn't cover all of our costs. So we're, the first part of the grant for the uh, transportation to, to cover um, help you know, supplement the cost that we have in transportation, especially with fuel. Fuel, um, I want to say we spent almost $50,000 on fuel last year <laughs> alone. Uh, not to mention we we have uh, regular maintenance of all our vehicles, uh, oil changes, and we also inspect our lifts. You know, for safety reasons, we want to make sure our lifts are operating properly. So um, I just imagine our operational costs have increased. Um, so the second part of that is that uh, about a year or so ago, uh, we have a fleet of about 10 vans, and all of them had their catalytic converters stolen. Uh -huh. um, not covered by insurance, but unfortunately. We have replaced the catalytic converters on six of these vehicles. And yeah, and we've also got what's called a cap strap so that they can't be stolen anymore, which is awesome. So the, the ones that have been repaired, we have not had cattle converters uh, stolen. If anybody goes down Pine Street and you look at the employee lot that, that Mary Wade has built on Pine Street, you might see four vans parked there. Those are the vans that aren't going anywhere because they don't have a cattle converter. So the second part of this, this uh, CDBG request is to um, repair those four vehicles so that we can increase the hours. And thank you for your time on that, Sarah. So, um, so going back, uh, our goal with this increased funding is to have more vans on the road so we can help more people. Um, we also can do more outreach. We work a lot with like their base apartments and 50 Grand Avenue um, to help the, the people who live there. Um, so we're looking at to increase from 1300 units to 1500 units. And also right now we have about 250 driver hours and we're looking to increase it to about 290 driver hours. So that's a that's whole mouthful. So does anybody have any questions about that? Is that yeah. free transportation for the people? Yes. Oh, yeah. it's, it's entirely free. It's donation based. So our driver will give the uh, client, the person that we transport, an envelope and um, they'll have their numbers so that they can call them back. And we can make a donation if they're able. It is not a requirement. We do recognize we have some people who, who don't get because they don't have any funds. We have people, it's it's like the, the story in the Bible with the, the old woman who gave like the quarter. We have we have people who give like four quarters because they want to give something. And you know, it just breaks my heart because I'm thinking to myself that could be all that they have in their excess money. So it's not required. We do not, we do not um make it a requirement for some people that we know who can't afford it and you can continue to transport them because we know that they need to start by. Thank you. Thank you so much. And any um questions on Zoom? Okay. I'm Tammy okay. Hands, raised on my end. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And um, I mean, you want to jump aside. Well, Good question, Patty. Um, 
Just for transparency, transparency purposes, should we announce that other letter now or wait until no, under announcements, right? Under announcements. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just see if the other people aren't here here, and then I guess Kurt. So. All right. So, uh, the Adam, do you see online uh, reaction agency Bianca Bowles? I don't think any. I haven't admitted anybody in. I I haven't seen her on on Zoom. Okay, and just double checking for Ms. Becky Mayberry uh, with the Lead and Healthy Homes program. I don't see anyone here. She and, she um confirmed earlier today, so I don't know why. All right. Oh, well. Yeah, and I, I don't see her on Zoom either. So okay. All right. Um. So that was all of our our presentations asking for a, a letter of support. Do we want to have the vote on uh? the community action agency even without the presentation or should I pull that off the the vote yeah recommendations are to pull it off on our end all right if, if it depth yeah, works for me all right so everyone uh the vote here let me just quick edit this and I will send a link to the chat. Um, this should also be in the after meeting email and agenda and everything you get there. Uh, if you don't get the emails yet, uh, talk to Abby or email us at fairhavencmt at gmail.com. We can always get you set up. Um, and I'm going to give a quick little share screen on this so you can see it. Um, so you basically just have to put in your name. We can double check that you are in fact a voting member. Uh, if you are ever curious, am I a voting member? Uh, you can uh, double check that the link again is in the emails. It's also on our website. Uh, and so you just put your name in. Um, if you're not a voting member, it's just a little more work for me to, you know, kind of take you out so we can do the totals. But uh, so, yeah, and then, you know, we have three votes for kind of two presentations, one for the, the Catholic charities for the uh, the after school program. Um, and then we have two for the Mary Wade homes. I split them up. Uh, so one is uh, the community transportation services that the, that was the second one we heard about. It's kind of ordered out of this. And then the other one is for the, the carpet replacement. So you can vote on those independently if you want. Uh, feel free to, you know, yes, no, abstain if you want to vote on one issue and not on another. So if you're like, you know, for whatever reason, I have a conflict of interest, you can feel free to abstain on any particular issue. And yeah, when then we will be closing this vote uh, Sunday at midnight, basically, the, or 11.59 p.m., so that on Monday we can send out our letters of support and all that kind of stuff. Adam, where would we find it right now? I don't see it. I'll be sending, sending it out in an email okay. tonight. Perfect. Yep. So yeah, it's either it's it's in the chat right now, but I know that's a pain in the butt to type in if you're looking at the chat. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be with Abby's uh, after meeting announcement. And again, if you haven't been getting any of the emails, feel free to talk to Abby right or right after the meeting or you can always email us at fairhavencmt at gmail.com. All right. Thank you so much, Adam. And we have um, Mr. Kirk Morrison with the Fairhaven Library with us to give some of his announcements. Hey, everyone. Uh, we are um, celebrating uh, Black History Month here at the library with a number of programs. Um, this Saturday um, at 11, we're going to have an author and playwright named uh, Calvin Ramsey. Um, if you subscribe to Connecticut Magazine, you might see an article about uh, that he's in the current issue. Um, but he will be in here to talk about a youth book called Ruth and the Green Book. Um, if you've uh, seen that uh, recent movie, The Green Book, you, you might know what this is. It's the... Um, it's the uh, book that black travelers used in um, the pre-civil rights era uh, to make sure they could travel safely or somewhat safely um, 
Uh, but this is a youth youth book that he'll be uh, talking about. Uh, encourage everyone to come. Uh, and then starting next Thursday and for the rest of the Thursdays this month, we're going to have a uh, Milestones in Black uh, film history uh, right, uh, right, in the, right in the room that some of you guys are in right now. Um, starting uh, next uh, uh, Thursday, we're going to uh, be uh, showing the movie Within Our Greats, uh, sorry, Within Our Gates by the uh, director Oscar Michaud. It's the... Um, from what we know, it's the oldest um, uh, still surviving movie that had a both a black director and primarily black cast from 1920. So it's a so this movie is more than 100 years old. Um, but we'll, but um, uh, we'll be showing uh, other movies uh, on the other uh, Thursdays to come. We have a flyer about it. We'll be glad to tell you about more of those. And uh, you know how things work here. We always have almost. Uh, always have something to go on on each day. Um, so come by and see us soon. Uh, go ahead. Um, can he just, what time for this Saturday and for the Thursdays? Saturday is 11 o'clock and Thursdays, the first two movies are at six o'clock. And then um, uh, the last Thursday this month, we're showing Black Panther, which is, which is a little bit longer. So that's gonna start at 5.30. Got it, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kirk. And just for uh, so everyone knows here in the room, we have the flyers there right on the table. If you're interested, you can take them home. All right. Thank you. And uh, moving on to our announcements. I think we have a couple with Abby. Yep. Um, and just a quick note, um, I connected with Becky Mayberry. She should be on Zoom shortly. So we'll have her presentation after this. OK. Um, there she is. Should we go? To her first, or oh yeah, sure. We can okay, with her. great. So I don't know if you let her in. There yeah, she's 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 coming in. It's it takes a second for it to awesome. click okay. through. But welcome, Becky. You can uh, unmute yourself, start your video, and you're you're good. Hi. Um, Hi, Becky. Sorry for the um mix up, but we are ready for your presentation when you are ready to give it. Okay, thank you. It's okay. Um, let me just share my screen really quick. Okay, is it going into presentation mode? Okay. Okay, so yes, my name is Becky Mayberry. I'm from the New Haven Health Department. <laughs> from the environmental health section. And um, this presentation is a quick presentation just about the two programs we are offering. Um, and it's for lead and healthy homes. So um, this is mainly about the healthy homes portion and our mission statement is to increase awareness of house housing related health hazards, lead poisoning prevention and overall principles of healthy home. Our program goal is to improve the quality of life through correcting home hazards that include air quality, tripping hazards, electrical hazards, fire hazards, and more. Um, so the Healthy Homes program has up to $10,000 available for renovations per unit, um, and it can be more than that depending on the needs of the unit or the home. Um, to be eligible for this program, your home has to be located in New Haven. You have to be current on property taxes, mortgage, and insurance. Um, Children do not have to live in the home for the healthy home programs, but it has to be acceptable for children under the age of six. And income restrictions do apply. Um, I do like to make residents aware that, um, well, homeowners aware at least, that there is a lien put on the home for five years. Um, and that just tries to cover you. So it tries to cover the city technically so that you're not just selling your home after these renovations, that you're actually keeping it and making, not making a profit off of it right away. Um, and every year that um, you keep the home for the five years, 20% of the loan is taken away. And by the end of five years, it will be, um, you will not have to owe anything else. And then you may do whatever you'd like with the home. Um, um, Hope, healthy homes can assess 29 hazards, which um, are lead paint hazards, fire hazards, tripping and falling hazards, dampness and mold, 
electrical hazards. Um, we also, one question that I always ask when I do assessments, is there anyone in the home who has asthma? And I do try to make people aware of the asthma triggers, which is air fresheners, mold, rodents, tobacco, smoke, dust, um, and dust mites. Um, so asthma is a big thing. So that's something we do always ask. Um, another program that they have, and I'm sorry, my counterpart is not here um, because I told her she could leave, but um, this is the LED program. It's another program that the city has, which can also do renovations. And for them, it's up to $15,000. But for this program, there must be children that live in the home. Um, and they only really focus on lead. So the house has to have lead. They don't focus on everything else that healthy homes focuses on because we have 29 things that we look for. We do a full home assessment. They do a partial home assessment. Um, and then, so this is how they talk about up to $15,000 per home. Um, and one thing I would like to make clear, the owner of the home, does it doesn't have to be owner occupied. It could just be a home with, only tenants living there um, sometimes. And if the home is owner occupied, that's fine as well. Um, so um, then it talks about that it is 80%, the income restriction is 80% below HUD's income limits. Um, and then it says again, the five-year for, forgivable loan. Uh, so how, do, how does this program get alerted by children? Uh, about the home. Usually it goes through the lead program New Haven because we do have um, lead inspectors that do get alerted if a child's blood lead level is over 0.5%, um, believe. And once they're alerted, there's automatically a lead inspection that goes on in the house. And then abatement happens through this program where they will go through and take care of the lead, the chipping and peeling paint in the home. So it doesn't always have to be just directly on the walls. It could be on the window seals. It could be dust. We also go in and teach them, teach um, residents and homeowners how to wet clean. Um, and then these are our best contact people. Zarka is um, the project manager. I am for healthy homes. And then we have Chelsea and Maddie who deal with just lead. Um, we do have separate applications for both programs. Healthy Homes is my program. We have applications for that one and lead as well. For a I got an interview. Um, so yes, that's um, about it for the two programs. If anyone had any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, I, I, oh, I, I had a question uh, you, on your, you said for Healthy Homes, uh, a, the house has to be kind of habitable by children under six. Does that mean we need like cabinet locks and those little things over the outlets or what is that? And I'm also curious what the uh, income restrictions are. So it, it just has to be, so if we do res renovations in your home, you have to be willing to rent it out to ch families with children um, because there's some people who will say, well, there's something wrong with my house. I just won't rent it out to kids. And once you enter the program, you kind of sign off saying, I'm willing to rent out to families with children. Um, so technically, if there's lead in the home, the lead has to be taken care of. Um, that's one of the big things. So children can live there because um, there are some people who don't want to abate their homes with the lead on the walls and the dust. They're just like, okay, we want rent to kids. Well, that's fine. You have that option to do so. But with this program, you have to be willing to take care of those issues or um, we can't do the program with you. Uh, and with the income restrictions, let's see. I'm looking at them now. So with the income restrictions, if very low would be 50%. So let's say it's a one person living in the home, the income you couldn't make more than 36,000. Um, if it's a family of three, you couldn't make more than 46,000. That's very low. Um, but on the lower end, if it was a family of three, it, it would be 71,000. That's the 80%. Um, you wouldn't be able to make more than 71,000 for the 80%. Or if it's a family of four, 79,000. Um, but then again, if it's just one person who's living in the home, the max would be um, 56,000. Are there any uh, questions here in the room? Um, in, oh, go ahead. 
if people have not looked at the lead dashboard that's online it's on the city of new haven health department website it's really extraordinary um i think it's a model for like transparency and public data management um you can look at it shows you you know all the kids who have tested over five what their status is exactly what's been done for that you're not not their individual information but just numbers um, of kids and, and their status so I think it's it's something we should think about for other things like LCI violations and other other areas where we want we would like more just public knowledge and accountability on on these sorts of things. But if you haven't looked at it, just go have have a look. I encourage. You. I don't know if somebody in the Zoom world can can find it and put it in the chat, but it's definitely worth having a look at. Yes. So hats off to you, Becky and your team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Mayberry. Any further questions on Zoom? Well, yeah, we don't have anything here. Anything further? I uh, I don't see any hands raised. Anybody? No. All right. Thank you so much for your information, Ms. Mayberry. I really do appreciate your work. Thank you. You know what? Have a good night. All right. Yeah. We'll move forward to announcements. Okay. We have two announcements tonight. Oh, um, and then uh, bylaws announcement as well. Oh, three announcements tonight. Okay. Um, so launching in, there has been, and we have a couple of reps from the Fairhaven Community Health Center, so they can also speak to this. Um, there was a very fast proposal that would require immediate turnaround from the NIH's Compass Funding Group, which is the Community Partnership to Advance Science for Society program. Um, it came to the attention of Fairhaven Community Health that they were eligible for some funding. So they needed the letter of support by today. So there was not time for us to do an official formal vote. So we, as the board, have issued the letter of support on behalf of the group. Um, it is for funding for multiple agencies and sectors to, you know, work on work with vulnerable populations all around the neighborhood um, and focusing on harm reduction. So they'll be working with all kinds of organizations, partnering with all kinds of groups around Fairhaven um, with this funding that we hope the NIH will approve. So just so you all know, that letter was submitted today. Um, so we just wanted to report on that. So any questions from anybody on Zoom or in, or in, the, in the house? All right, is Sue, is Sue still on? Yeah, Sue and Dominic is also on. I don't know if Either of you wanted to speak about a little bit more about what you might be using the funding for, or if Sarah, you have any thoughts? Yeah, I would defer to them unless they want. Um, so this is a twelve million dollar ten year proposal hmm. to build like a multi sectoral partnership around harm reduction here, working with the sex worker and drug user populations. Um, so there's a strong research component, and there's also a strong sort of expansion of service delivery component. So all the alders in their haven have signed on with a letter of support. All of the schools in the neighborhood have also submitted letters of support, as did the um, chief of police. So this is a really broad-based effort. There's also involvement from Yale School of Public Health, Yale School of Medicine, Junta, Unidad Latina Nacion. It's, it's truly multi-sectoral, and, and I think I mean, uh, it's it really fits exactly. Uh, it's exactly aligned with the purpose of the grant. So um, you never know with these federal grants whether they're going to come through. But this this one seems, I think, um, like a really natural fit and would be really excellent for the neighborhood. It allows us to do a lot of the work that we've been doing at a smaller scale at a much broader scale. I think we have much bigger impact. Thank you, Sarah, for that helpful yeah. expansion. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it comes through. Do we know when we hear back? I don't know when we hear. I know that implementation or like the planning, the initial phases of the the work of the grant would start in the fall. Okay. In September. Okay. Oh, we have another one, right? Yes, Gina is going to distribute the papers for our second announcement. Oh. Yeah. Can we discuss it? Yeah. Okay. On the February 15th, UI and Southern Connecticut Gas SCG, they're signing up people that have financial assistance 
um, that they're having problems paying the utility bills. And on February 15th, it's going to be at the St. Louis Episcopal Church at 111 Whaley Avenue. It's going to be the only sign up location in that area. They've done Bridgeport and they also did another community too. So if you want information, um, I'm going to leave it over there and I'm also going to leave some at the library front desk. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Now I'll type that information here in the chat too so people can, can see how we're in a second. All right. All right. Uh, wait, 211 or 215? Uh, two, the 215, I think, is the information I have. Wednesday, February 15th, 4 to 7 p.m. Let me just get the location in a second. Yeah, it's St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. 111 where we are. All right. Uh, should I, do I have the floor for the, the bylaws? You do. All right. Um, so uh, a couple months ago, we, we formed a, a bylaws committee to discuss updating the bylaws. Uh, thanks to the work of, uh, let's see, we got on the chat here, Dave Weinreb, uh, and in the room, we have Patty Scussel and uh, Darlene Casella. Uh, and we got together a few times over the last couple of months to really kind of, you know, hash out any of the issues, problems, whatever, with the old bylaws that as they existed. Um, you know, some of it was uh, changes that were kind of you know, key, we think to, you know, this kind of new thing that we're doing with, we have in-person and Zoom and, you know, how do we make this accessible and open to everybody? So we kind of added that. And then, you know, we did a lot of little changes that were just, you know, oh, there's, you know, bad language here, or, you know, this is confusing or what have you. So uh, I'm going to send a link to the chat, which again is, also going to be put into the, the after meeting email and everything like that um, with a new proposed bylaws that we've all kind of, you know, agreed to saying, yes, this looks good, but that's just our committee. This is just what we've kind of said the bylaws should look like. But now we want you, the body, to look over this for the next month at least. Um, because we're going to need you to, to kind of approve or disapprove this. But part of that is really, could, if you go through this, see if there's anything in there that stands out to you that's like, wait, why is this like this? You know, where's this clause? Where's that clause? Um, so I, I really appreciate anyone that can take the time, look over this document with our new draft proposed um, and, you know, if you have feedback, please, uh, you can always contact us at fairhavencmt at gmail.com. Um, and we, we can, we can kind of come to, you know, alter things that might need to be altered. And then we'll be coming back to you, uh, probably next month, uh, to, to actually vote these, these in. So, uh, you know, the, the sooner you can kind of Look it over. Give us your thoughts. The 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 more that helpful that is. Give us more time. We will send a Google Doc link in the follow up email. Yes, one comment, um, Adam. It's Darlene. Um, how will, will we make this available to people who are not on the computer or Zoom or any you know in person? Are you going to have some available here for people? Right. Uh, I I, I totally spaced on that, but I should. Uh, I'll either print it out myself and bring it to the library or I'll talk to Kirk and maybe he can print them out and leave them somewhere. But uh, I'll get that done as soon as possible so that people can can come to the library and read it over if they want. If we're going to vote on it, you're saying we're going to vote in March. Um, you need to have it available so people can read it before March, I guess. Otherwise, we'll have to go April. 
Right. Um, yeah. That's why I want to get it. I'll, I'll get it kind of a, a physical copy is, is over there as soon as I can. Sure, Obviously it's a little late tonight, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, if, you know, and then they're closed on right. I don't, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll definitely get it there as soon as I can. Well, if we don't vote on March, we can go in April. It's not yeah. that critical. But I think everybody you want to be sure everybody who's not online can read it. Otherwise, you know. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. And we'll move on to the Alder reports for wards 8, 9, 10, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, if you don't know who your ward or other are, um, we can get that information over to you. Um, on the agenda, there's information about the contact number and email address for each ward. And um, I know that's sent online in an email as well. If you don't see your Albert here and would like them to be present, you can certainly reach out to them. Do not hesitate to call or email them and invite them into the meeting. They may not be here sometimes because of other obligations such as other meetings or family commitments, but definitely reach out to them with any questions or concerns you may have. Uh, and of course, invite them to the meeting. We uh, have Oliver Ellen Cooper up first with Ward 8. I don't see her here, and I haven't seen her online yet. Sorry. Uh, no, I haven't seen her since the, yeah, a couple months now, I don't think. All right, and I don't, we don't have any updates that she had sent um, to report either uh, on our end. With Ward 9, Alder Claudia Herrera, I think she was online. I saw her briefly. Yeah, yes, yeah, she is. So, oh, yep, she's she's waving. So, if you have anything to say, Alder Herrera, you feel yeah, free to unmute. The Hi, everyone. Good night. I'm sorry I was not able to be there, but I got a little bit sick. But I look forward to meet you more. Well, just a quick announcement that uh, Sarah probably already told you. We are planning to be active, she and I, to intend to put that community together. We are gonna be walking on the streets of so all areas of her heaven where there's more trouble. And we also got offer from the police department that one of the police officers gonna work with us in LCI. The intention is trying to um, improve the quality of life and try to get back um, the community to us. So please look forward. If anyone has a particular problem in your corner, uh, please advise, send an email, and we will meet you there. That, that's all I have right now. Thank you so much. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next up, Ward 10, Alder Ana Festa. I did not see her coming online either. Nope. No. All right. And we don't have any updates on her behalf to report either. Um, Ms. Elder Sarah Miller with Ward 14 is here at the library. Do you have any? Um, Hi, everyone. Sure, I can give some updates. Nice to see you, everyone. Hi, we're happy you're here. <laughs> um, so I'll start with the project that Claudia, that Elder Herrera mentioned, which is doing a schedule of like neighborhood walks for kind of coming at them. Um, so we're going to, we, we did a few already in uh, some different corners and we've spoken with the police and we're going to set a regular schedule, which we'll announce and we'll give a flyer probably next month. Um, uh, just to be sort of a continuous presence in areas where there is, are issues or, or not, or just, you, you know, you just feel like people there need, um, need their doors knocked and just to be checked on. So think about spots that you think might be good in the neighborhood for that. We're going to have like some two-hour block, probably one on a Friday, late Friday afternoon, and then a Sunday afternoon. So people who have different work schedules can join and we get people to work at different times. Um, so that's one thing we're working on. Strong School, we're moving ahead um, in that process. We had an MOU in place by the end of uh, December, which was a big accomplishment um, and the next step which the next step in the process is to get the land and position agreement drafted and submitted to the board of alders we have a, a finished draft that is with the developer and they've already told us the you know the there'll be some comments back but they're not too extensive so we don't anticipate a really 
contentious or complicated process with the land disposition agreement. The zoning, um, there'll have to be a few zoning adjustments and those will happen as well once that agreement is submitted. So by the end of this month, we should have an agreement submitted to the Board of Alders and then the various meetings that that kicks off will be initiated. And it's probably like a two and a half to three month process before all of that is finalized. But it's moving along nicely. So I'm, um, you know, we've been, Penrose has been a great partner. Everybody in the EDA and Health Development has been very hard working and responsive. So, so far we're just really happy with um, the pace and the nature of the collaboration. And Carmen um, from Penrose, Carmen Chung will, has offered to come to our meeting next month. So you can ask her any questions you have directly. And by then there should be a few more things moving that you can ask about. Um, the other thing is, as I mentioned before, we've been able to secure American Rescue Plan dollars to renovate the Atwater Senior Center into a community center. And so we want to get community input into what that should look like, how those dollars should be spent. And so there's going to be a community meeting that we just set for March 6th, the Monday in the evening. And we'll have a flyer for that that we'll distribute, obviously, to the management team and bring it to the next um, meetings. I think the meeting, this meeting will happen before that uh, for March. Uh, but go ahead and put on your calendars because uh, it'll be a great opportunity to weigh in on, on that process. Uh, what else? Fair Haven Day, we talked about this the last time. So we're super excited um, that we've spoken with the Arts and Ideas Neighborhood Festival folks, and we're going to kind of merge the two festivals into one. So the Arts and Ideas stage festival will be sort of a component of a broader festival um, that we're planning for uh, Saturday, May 6th. Uh, and some of the things we've been talking about is um, we're gonna face it at Fairhaven School and we're gonna have a parade. It's in like 12 to six will be the, the event at the school, but we're gonna start at the parade in the morning at gathering at James. Street and close Grand Avenue for an hour and have people walk down Grand Avenue to the school. And then we'll have music and all kinds of activities there for the afternoon. So anybody who's interested in joining, we have a planning committee. If, uh, Frank is involved. Well, not yet, but you're all invited. Um, uh, May 6th is the event. And our next planning committee meeting is Saturday, February 11th at 9 in the morning at J&J &J Restaurant. And everybody is more than welcome to, to join. If you can't come to that meeting, but you want to join, just let me know and you're it. Um, I was going to speak to the Fairhaven Community Health Center grant. We did that. But one other thing I want to mention is I've been approached by um, a former New Haven firefighter who would like to open a restaurant in the former Grand Cafe space. Oh, oh wow. Padilla. It would be a Puerto Rican restaurant. Did lunch with him today. Um, he's very well connected in the community, very committed to not just opening a restaurant, but really contributing to the transformation of that location. Um, he does want to apply for a beer, at least a beer and wine permit to be part of his restaurant. And it's complicated because as part of the Grand Cafe decision, it was determined that there can never ever be a liquor license in that location. So, um, you know, we, we want to just engage with him. I think it would probably be possible for him to get the license, but only with really broad community support. And so I think it's important that we think about this hard and really engage with him um, as somebody who, I, you know, I think has good intentions, but we obviously want to be careful because we fought really hard to change yeah. that and we don't want to take any risk with it going back. Um, they were two different things. Beer and wine is different. From it's different from like a full liquor yeah, license. Yeah. He would like a full liquor license, and we kind of yeah. said completely yeah. no to that. But um, so what I've suggested is if you come to the next or a future management team meeting, you can ask them your questions directly, get your sense of, and it wouldn't be like asking for a formal letter of support, yeah. at least not initially, but just to engage with us because it's um, he he worked at the lumber fire station for many years. Yeah. He knows the community. He, you know, he, I think it's it's a overall a very good proposal, um, an opportunity, but the liquor thing makes everybody nervous. So but he lives in Fairhaven. Or no? He doesn't live in Fairhaven. He grew up in the hill. Mm -hmm. So where does he live now? 
Yeah. I don't remember which town, but you can ask him. You can ask him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if anybody has questions about any of that stuff or anything else, I have. Yeah, I have one question. Across from the post office, there's I see some renovation in a building. It used to be, I think, green cleaner. Yes. And someone said they were opening a restaurant. Do you know? It doesn't look like sure. I think that I put in it's, um, that's Musa from Turkcell. It's his. It's his property. Yeah. Um, I think he wanted to be mixed use, but I don't. I don't oh, know yeah. that. It, I think he did move in there, there, and I don't remember what there's a cold weather. So maybe tell the shot. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and he's you know he's he's a he's a very active merchant on the avenue. You know, I think we're not right. Any other questions for Albert Miller uh, either on Zoom or here in the room? No, no. Oh, oh, one one other thing. Um, well, so in conversations with some of the merchants on Grand Avenue, um, an issue that has come up is that, um, uh, so they've been meeting more and more, um, and which is good. And, uh, but some of them don't know how to use Zoom if they just haven't had the opportunity. And so we want to make sure the meetings are as accessible as possible to everybody. So, um, we've enlisted Caroline from Collab to um, do a Zoom training, which is open to the merchants, but also open to anybody in the community. And it's going to be the Wednesday, February 15th, 6.30 um, at the police substation. On and Lashley? On um, Lashley, okay. yes. And we do have a flyer for that, which we can make available um, to the management team. What's the other thing on the 15th? Awesome. Yeah. They just said that to me. Is that date, is that date set in, set in stone? Only because that's the same date that the UI and Southern Grand Gas are, are working with people. So I just want to make sure that like, it doesn't clash. Yeah. What time is this? In the evening? Yeah. yeah. It's until 7. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. The, yeah. Light um, Yeah. Yeah. We can, I mean, I think this is the first one. We'll see how it goes. If there's more demand, mm -hmm. We'll yeah. Got it. If Caroline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not everybody. You know, yeah, know. Right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Albert. Uh, and Albert Ernst in Santiago, Ward 15. I don't see him here in the room. And I don't think I see him connected online either. And we don't have anything to report on his behalf. Uh, Albert Jose Crespo, Ward 16. Uh, I do not see him here in the room, nor do I see him online uh, on Zoom. Okay. So, and again, nothing uh, for the, on his behalf to report out to everyone. Uh, so, again, just a reminder um, feel free at any time to reach out to them and uh, with any questions or concerns uh, and or to encourage them to come to our monthly meeting. Uh, and just moving forward to lastly, our community forum and adjournment. If there's any questions about our recent agenda or recommendations for the future ag agenda items or announcements, please feel free to email us at fairhavencmt at gmail.com. And if there's nothing further, we just said make it a motion to adjourn. I'm going to put a motion. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great thank evening you. and have a great month. Yay. Thank, thank you, Liz. For your wonderful. All right. Thank you, everyone who who came in person on Zoom. Uh, we will see you next month, hopefully. And I confirmed, yeah, the library is closed tomorrow. So I'll be working to get those yeah. paper copies of the uh, bylaw proposals on Saturday. Adam, I'm gonna update the um in-person sign-in sheet right now. All right, thank you.